Last question, question number eight. <clears throat> How aware or focused is your informatics team about um, informatics regulatory requirements? So our students in their, um, their readings had to read about meaningful use, high, the High Tech Act, and they may think that we just bring it up for no reason, Lisa, or, is, or do you guys focus on it? What's it like in really in practice? Yeah, we absolutely focus on it. Um, mm -hmm. Again, the, the meaningful use is kind of an outdated term. It's the interoperability that they actually... Um, that term is actually replacing that. So we're promoting interoperability. We do focus on it more in the outpatient venue. We're trying to get better at the printed material that you get for a visit summary or what goes to your portal if you are on the patient portal versus mm -hmm. getting a paper when you leave um, from the clinic. But it's all those things that address your BMI, um, smoking. We're looking at interoperability from the time that a patient enters our system, our health system, whether it's a clinic, an ER trauma visit, or, you know, they come into the hospital with an acute problem. So at the inception of creating your registration, <laughs> we have that focus on the interoperability. We do have a team within IS deals with a different aspect of things. So we have a very robust cybersecurity team. Their former armed services, you know, folks, wow. maybe, maybe uh, folks who've done this for many years, um, who are looking at it. And we, I think it was two months ago, they, we were hacked. Um, Penn State Health System was hacked. They took away our um, access to look at our um, Gmail. That's where they found the problem was. You can still go out to Google and Google something, but you can't open your Gmail because that's how they got in. Wow. They found, you know, they, these hackers find ways. So they immediately shut it down. So we had no notice, but, you know, that's the stuff they do. They track it as soon as we find out. So um, that's an example of that. But there's a whole team of cybersecurity. Um, there's a whole team that looks at the patient portal, um, again, to make it robust and make sure it's interactive for and easier to use for the variations of um, patients that we have in the community when you're admitted in the acute care setting. And then uh, health information management is the team, the whole team, again, that looks at every part of the medical record. Um, if you're scanning in a form from an outside place, how to get that in the medical record so that we can retrieve that information later. Any time, you know, like I said, that hierarchy, they're the ones that define that. Like that's against, you know, medical records, you know, issues, you know, um, they, they speak to all of those regulatory things. And there's also a whole thing about charging and billing, which is also uh, with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, issue for everybody from a clinic setting, you know, all the way through, you know, to an academic trauma center. You need to be very diligent about how charges are dropped from documentation or um, how things are billed, you know, so that's a big part of HIM. Penn State Health, many organizations, there's a CIO, Chief Information Officer, mm -hmm. and their awareness, uh, they, they're a member of many, many national organizations <laughs> and keep their pulse on challenges, you know, to interoperability and cybersecurity and all that. And then there's a chief medical information officer who's a physician who's got that clinical perspective. And then many organizations have a chief nursing information officer as well. We don't have that at Penn State Health. That is, you know, one thing. So those are all, you know, ways that, you know, those that at that level in the organization, they can make sure that all of these issues are being kept after and uh, we're avoiding any issues and keeping up with national standards. Lisa Robinson, the interview of a century um, just <laughs> absolutely blew me away with your knowledge. Um, so much more than I could have ever, um, ever asked for. Mm -hmm. Our students are so lucky to um, be getting this information from you today. We are so grateful. Whatever you want to say, <laughs> you're, you're on it. The only thing I didn't see in the, in the Q&A, which I'm, I'm just going to throw in mm -hmm. is you know, for someone who's interested in informatics, um, you know, wants to know more or, you know, really is energized, you know, by this information, <laughs> um, whether now or down the road, um, I, I mentioned the self-awareness and all, but um, really getting um, some advice on what to do next. And I would say the networking awesome. and collaboration, you know, um, figuring out in your organization, um, you know, maybe go through your manager or just go, you know, to your internal um, 
you know, um, infonet kind of system and look up, um, you know, who in the directory is the director of, of clinical informatics or, you know, do you have a CIO? Who's the, you know, do you have a CNIO? Like finding out that information, you know, speaking to your manager about volunteering as a super user. If there's new equipment coming on your unit, um, you could offer to be the point person for your shift, you know, day shift, night shift or whatever, um, to, you know, go around and touch base with everybody, make sure they understand they're comfortable. They can contact you if they need eye stat machine or a point of care device or something. Um, so super user volunteer is, um, one thing and also aware of some projects that your unit might be piloting. IS is, you know, working on a project that will impact your unit, um, and you can, volunteer to join that project and, and be their um, testing person or their subject matter expert. We call them SMEs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. you <clears throat> represent um, the bedside nurse or uh, whatever your role is in the in that clinical setting um, and do some testing and be involved. And you can kind of get a feel for then how things work um, between IS and you know the clinical areas. The other thing is if you are a magnet facility, you can join shared governance councils. I was chair of a, a governance council for uh, two years and got a lot of insight that it wasn't just about me and my ICU, it was all. <laughs> um, well, it should be. <laughs> lots of, yeah, at the time that was my, um, I had my horse blinders on, but you know. So it was, um, you know, joining different committees. That'll give you a feel for uh, networking and, and branching outside of your unit. And it, you know, it may take a couple of years of that kind of networking until you finally see where you might best fit in or, you know, what you enjoy. The other thing is to um, speak up. If you see any workflow um, that just doesn't make sense, it's inefficient, it's unsafe, like definitely speak up if it's unsafe. Um, but those are where ideas come from to make things better. Um, one person can make a huge difference to all the clinical areas in, in a facility. So um, I would say speak up. You know, if you go to a conference and you hear this information and you think that would be awesome, like I wonder if we could do that, come back, bring that information, um, share your best practice. Maybe ask your manager, can we start this as a pilot in our unit? And then if it goes well, maybe we can take it to the next you know meeting with the managers and you know, extend it out to other units or something like that, you know, or with other departments. It may be something with, you know, how you deliver your meds or, you know, anything like that. And the last thing was about, you know, joining organizations. Um, I'm actually the secretary of the, of a um, Delaware Valley chapter of ANEA, American Nursing Informatics Association. They have journals. I mean, I think the membership is like $79 a year. Um, we have you know, meetings that are quarterly for members, but there's also, like I said, access to tons of um, research and, uh, you know, peer reviewed journals. So we have that. And then HIMSS, which is the Health Information and Management Systems Society. Um, and that'll be more of things on a national level that you might want to pay attention to buzzwords that are coming up, artificial intelligence, <clears throat> all kinds of things. So, you know, if you have an interest, um, that would be some other uh, things you can do. Lisa Robinson, wonderful um, informatics specialist, Penn State Health. So grateful uh, to have you with us today. We really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. Thank you for having me.